Hi friends, it's Friday again. Here we are already at the end of May. We started these stay-at-home orders in the middle of March and as a church we've gone through the rest of Lent and all of Easter and now looking forward to Pentecost this weekend. And wow, do we need Pentecost. We need the spirit of the risen Christ to blow life into us to breathe new life into this church and into this world, to breathe love and hope and justice and mercy into this broken world. I know that you, like, like I am, that you are grieving with the families of Ahmaud Arbery and Breonna Taylor and Sean Reed and George Floyd. You're grieving with the protesters who are in Minneapolis calling out for justice. I want to urge you, as you follow the news, that you not just get all of your information from your favorite social media resource, but that you contact folks who are in the midst of trying to serve, trying to make changes, living out their calling by being on the front lines of healing and hope and protesting. I've heard from folks on the ground in Minneapolis and their stories are very different from what gets portrayed in the media. Stories of who is starting what's called riots, stories of those who are wreaking havoc on neighborhoods that people love and rely on every day restaurants and stores owned by recent immigrants that seem to be the targets for some of those who are wreaking havoc. So please find your information in places that are on the ground and not just someone's opinion being tweeted or posted out on social media. When we can speak the truth and see the truth, we can then, be, we can then start to confess and move slowly toward reconciliation. While I know my heart is grieving, I can do that with a sense of trust that Christ in fact is, is Lord of all and will redeem the messes that we make and in the end will assure us that not only love and grace will prevail but that in God's eyes and in God's time, we will celebrate as one people, beloved by the one who created us.